Alright, we're gonna grill you. Alright, grill away. I'm ready. So last season there was like a more mystical element. What can you tease about like the, the tone of the season? Five? The tone this tone the year this year will be much more it'll be much more gritty, much more return to our roots. I think Steven has said in the press a lot that this is that was the goal and it's definitely our goal as well is to kinda of come back and make it more of a crime show the way it was in season one, more villains of the week, more kind of close ended stories. And uh, yeah, magic will still be there because we've introduced it now and just you know, we're going to honor that that was what we did in season four, but it's not going to drive story the way it did last year. Can you tease about the, the new uh, kind of foes that uh, uh, Oliver Queen and his team will face for the next season? Well, a couple of things. I think, um, you know, in the, when we come into the season at the top in, in 501, we'll, there'll be a new kind of element of crime in the city, which will be led in some ways by Chad L. Coleman's character. There will also be a lot of, um, we really want to explore the mafia and kind of the criminal underworld that we've hinted at at various times in the, and throughout the years, but this year we want to really get into that and, and go, and that will also take us into kind of the Bratva and also tie in with flashbacks more since we will be in Virginia. What can you tell us about those Bratva flashbacks? We're just that we're super excited about them. I mean, everyone's been waiting five years to do this, and we're really, we're just, we're thrilled. It's going to be great. We're going to, we really want to delve into the world of Bratva, really see how he became a captain and what his experiences were there, and to make it as, again, like kind of gritty and visually different and dynamic as possible. So it's and we're also going to tie them in much more to, with the present day stories thematically. So you'll you'll feel the kind of there'll be a little more uh, I don't know, synergy between the front and the back stories than we've had I think in present in past years. Will the ship and Tristan's back be developed again? Like, will she have to face those struggles? Because um, that's what's keeping her locked. Is so she going to have to struggle with that at all? That's a good question. Um, we don't have any immediate plans to do that, but it is new technology. You know, I guess you never know. Hopefully not, though. <laughs> we like this new technology. And what can you tease about where we can find all of our Felicity's relationships with this season? Well, in the past, we you know, one of the things that I know Elicity is very sort of lightning rod of controversy on the internet, um, we love them in a very ambiguous place at the end of season four. And I think we'll get some clarity in the first five episodes, particularly in episode five of season five. But by the same token, we really, one of the reasons that relationship happened is because we were really writing to those characters and writing to Stephen and Emily. And we're going to do the same thing in season five. We're going to let, like, we're going to kind of let the characters tell us where they want to go and we'll see where we end up. Now that the world has kind of expanded as much as it has, how do you balance that expanded world and also really focusing on your own characters? It's a tricky thing. I think Arrow in particular being the first of the four and also being in a way the most grounded. I mean, when they, when Mark and Andrew and Greg first came out with the show, there was no superpowers. It was meant to be very grounded, very gritty. And season five is, is an attempt to sort of really answer to that. And, and it is about balance. I mean, we have to deal with Flashpoint, but we're going to do it in a way that is very much part of the Arrow, Arrow universe. And I think the way we deal with meta is the same. We want it, we'll always, we have to honor them that they're there. And we want to, because it, it actually opens up storytelling possibilities for us. But by the same token, we don't want it to change that much, to change that much of the DNA of the show. So it'd be, it's a tricky balance, but I think we will, it will be story dependent. If we find the right story, and we want to bring in a meta, or we want to talk about Flashpoint, we will do that. So we've known that Arrow's had a five-year story from from start to now. So now that we're entering into season five, kind of how far ahead do you guys have to look at as far as story goes? Is it it's season six, season seven, or is it's just up in the air? It always sort of you always feel a little bit. Are you, t are you tempting fate if you go? Oh well, we're talking about season six now. Well, you don't have a pickup for season six, but um, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to talk too to break too far ahead. But you always are thinking about it because you have to. We always know where we're going to end up. We usually know at the end of the season at least where Oliver and and our big bad or the villain of the, of the season will, where they will end up. So you're sort of always thinking, well, what is the most dramatic ending for the season? And that does raise questions about season season six and beyond. So you're sort of thinking about it, but it's very fluid. 
because it changes. It, every every episode sort of changes the shape of the X some okay. Yeah. Each season kind of has like a definitive theme. Like, what can you tell us about the theme of season five? The theme this year is definitely legacy, and it's really going to revolve around Oliver going back to his roots, as we've talked about, and also answering that question of, you know, he he got into this because he wanted to right his father's wrongs. Has he's going to be evaluating? Has he done that? And how is what is the best way to do that? Is it as the mayor? Or is it as Green Arrow? And while he's struggling with those questions, everyone else will be also similarly thinking about their own legacies. Felicity, Diggle, everybody will be kind of in that same headspace of, is this, you know, is this a hard life they've chosen? Do they want to keep doing this? And when they do, what is that? What kind of legacy of leaving behind for themselves, their memory, and their families? 